Hello, my name's Larry. Welcome back. I'm going to talk some more about how I live with uh, stage 4 prostate cancer. Today I'm going to give you a, uh, a history of my journey with cancer from the time that I started having high ESA numbers up until today. Uh, I just want to mention that really my, it's not just metastatic prostate cancer that I'm dealing with at the moment. I also have pretty serious problem with neuropathy in my legs and feet and I've lost a balance and I've also and I believe it's because of the cancer treatment I my thyroid no longer works correctly and they're, uh, they're dealing with that with some a drug. So it's really a three-pronged problem but Today I'm just going to talk about the cancer journey. I'll make different videos about the neuropathy and one on the thyroid. But let's go back to the, the beginning of the <clears throat> cancer problem. It started out, uh, I was getting PSA tests after 50 where I worked. Uh, every year I'd get a PSA test and for some years it was fine and then around 2012, I started getting some numbers around four, which still is not terrible. But then in uh, 2015, I got some numbers that went up to eight, and then they went up to 12. And at that, that was with Dr. Durr, my primary care physician, <clears throat> who's no longer in practice. And then uh, they went to 12, and then he suggested I get a, a biopsy on my prostate. So in uh, the fall of 2015, I had a biopsy of my prostate done by Dr. Sirachi here in Berwick, Pennsylvania. And uh, after the biopsy, it came back with a result that I did have cancer it was in all 12 of the core samples in my prostate, and I had a Gleason score of 7, and the Gleason score is uh, an indication of how unusual, how cancerous the cells look, how irregular they are. So in 20 of <clears throat> 2016, in February then, Dr. John Danella uh, removed my prostate, a radical prostateectomy with the Da Vinci machine, the robotic surgery. <clears throat> and he took that out in uh, February, I think it was right around February 25th of 2016. After that, my PSA number, my prostate specific antigen number, was less than 0.02, which is where we want it. It shows that I. <clears throat> removed uh, whatever was dumping the prostate specific antigens into my bloodstream. And then for four years until April of 2020, I was less than 0.02 in my PSA numbers and uh, everything was fine. I was walking about four or five miles, uh, five days a week and uh, I felt good. But in April of 2020, my PSA read 0.02 instead of less than 0.02. And over the next few months, it was checked uh, a few times, and it, it went from 0.02 up to 0.08. And at that point, I uh, was seeing uh, Dr. Fiori Elite. He's a radiation oncologist in Danville, Geisinger. And he and I agreed that, what are we waiting for? We might as well do uh, a cleanup on my prostate bed with radiation. So between December of 2020 and January of 2021, I had 38 radiation treatments in Danville. And uh, after that, in July of 2021, I had a PET scan. And what they found there was that I had... Uh, my cancer, I had, a, I had a tumor in my lung. We didn't know what it was. 
but we knew I had a tumor in my right lung. So uh, it was decided that I'd have a bronchoscopy uh, to see whether it was uh, cancerous or not. We were, they were pretty sure it was cancerous, but they didn't know whether it was a metastatic prostate cancer or whether it was a, a new lung cancer. So uh, I actually had two bronchoscopies. The first one uh, done by Dr. Salati in Wilkesbury, Geisinger uh, confirmed that it was cancerous, but they couldn't tell from the sample, the biopsy, whether or not it was uh, lung cancer or metastatic prostate cancer. So I had to have another bronchoscopy that was done in Danville Geisinger by Dr. Michael Ayers and he can after that biopsy it was confirmed that I did have metastatic prostate cancer in my right lung at that point and that was in uh, let's see that was August 16th of 2021 and on September 2nd of 2021 uh, I had seen Dr. Hyun Wong in the Napa Clinic in Danville Geisinger and she, she suggested I that I start on Lupron injections every three months and that I would start daily Erlita or Apalutamide Apalutamide that is which is a brand name Erlita on a daily basis I also took Cassid X for two weeks but that was just for those two weeks so that started me on my uh, Erlita and Lupron and uh, the pills and the uh, Lupron injections, which I'm, I'm also on September. In September, I had of 2021, I also had five radiation, high intensity, high intensity radiation sessions to that tumor in my right lung. So after all of that, so I had the radiation, and I and now I'm starting on Lupron injections in. Erlita, my next time they checked my um, PSA number, it was down less than 0.02. So that's a good thing. The time, that time I also got a second opinion from uh, a doctor at Johns Hopkins, Dr. Catherine Handy Marshall, and she agreed that we were on the right course at Geisinger. And like I said, my PSA went down less than 0.02 in December of 2021 and it stayed that way through December of 2022 which is where we are today um, but uh, I, I did mention that I do have neuropathy and uh, long story short they found a tumor on my spine now I'll talk more about that in a different video, but uh, and I did go to uh, Johns Hopkins, back to Dr. Catherine Handy Marshall, and get a second opinion on what she thinks, what she thought about the uh, the MRIs. I'll talk more about that, but uh, um, right now I am on a vacation from the apalutamide, the Erlita. I'm getting a three-month vacation, and then they're going to reevaluate after giving me a rest from the apalutamide. Apalutamide. It's uh, they think it's thought that possibly Dr. Handy Marshall thought, and I, and uh, also Dr. Alawalia thinks that maybe <clears throat> the. Thyroid problem may be caused by the Erlita, so we're going to see what that looks like. And anyway, it's uh, it's pretty typical, I guess, to have a vacation from the Erlita. Um, so that's pretty much where it stands at the moment. And uh, the next video, I think, I'll make about the the, the neuropathy problem I'm having. So thanks for listening and. Uh, those of you with prostate uh, cancer or if you have loved ones with prostate cancer uh, stay in the game do not give up
Thanks, and I'll talk to you later.